I've spent the past year obsessing over parts, saving every dollar I could, and watching way too many build guides, all for this moment. So today I'm building my dream gaming PC, or at least attempting to because I have no experience whatsoever. So will it boot up or break? Let's find out as I take you along my PC building journey. The first step of building a PC is research. And since this is my first time building a PC, you know I did a ton of research. But after a whole month of figuring out which parts I want to get, I'm finally ready to start buying them. My budget for this build is $1,200, which is all I have saved up right now. But anyway, let's head to Micro Center for the first three parts of the build. Micro Center is known for having many great deals, but I came here specifically for a AMD CPU motherboard and RAM deal, which I'll put on screen right now. But anyway, let's go ahead and grab it. All right, so we're back with the goods, but these three parts are not all we need to build a PC. So let's go ahead and buy the rest online. So after buying all the parts, the total cost ended up being $1,234.67. Please subscribe for my wallet. Anyway, I did get several of these parts on sale, which helped the cost a lot. It would have costed a lot more without these sales. But anyway, now all I have to do is wait for all the parts to come in and then I can build it. So I'll see you then. Finally, after seven days, all the parts have arrived. Also, I'll be going over every part that I got and why I bought it as I build the PC, and everything that I have here is linked in the description if you want to check it out. Everyone knows building PCs with friends is better than alone, so I brought my friend Nathan to help me build this PC. But before we do the build, we're going to ground ourselves so we don't accidentally destroy the motherboard. Alright, so the first thing you want to do when building a PC is take out the motherboard and put everything on that before actually installing it in the case. CPU you have a choice here is the Ryzen 7 7700X. This was in the Microsoft Center. This is in the Micro Center bundle, and that's why I pretty much got this one. All right, so now we're just gonna uh, we're gonna take this thing back, right? And carry something out of the CPU and not drop it. This is heavier than it looks. This is as a first time builder, this is definitely heavier than it looks. But right here, you see a little arrow. I don't know if it's focusing. I can't really see it, but there's an arrow. You will line up with the arrow on your motherboard, and you're gonna take this. You're gonna lower it in slowly. You're just gonna make sure it fits. Shake it a little bit. Don't apply pressure, but like make sure it fits and like it's gonna work, right? I'm gonna put this thing back down like that. I'm just gonna slowly put this thing back down, you know, slowly. So the next thing we're gonna do on our motherboard is the RAM. And if you have two sticks like I do, I got this Corsair Vengeance RGB at Micro Center. It's the same specs as the one in the bundle that I got at Micro Center, but it's only 10 bucks to upgrade. So you want to put it in the slot you have open. You want to make sure this pin kind of aligns so I have this backwards. Yeah, so you want to do this and you want to just like snap it in. That felt like it was going to break, but it didn't, okay? No. This really feels like it's going to break. All right, so then the last thing we're going to put in the motherboard right now is just the SSD. All right, you may be thinking, why did you go with four flipping terabytes in the NVMe SSD? And I can explain. It's because um, video editing, 4K stuff has, like, you need a lot of storage. So, yeah, this looks it, it, this looks smaller in real life than when you watch people to use it, but... It's, it's the size of a sticky dog. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, unscrew this part right here of the SSD. It says M.2 SSD. This is the M.2 SSD. It looks weird. That's why you have this... Thing that matches your motherboard take the plastic off or else it's gonna not be good it's gonna melt yeah this is keeps it cool and it looks better than than whatever color this is red you should just be able to push this down right there and then just screw it back in real quick comment what color your pc is so the next part the last part before we're actually gonna done with the motherboard for now is gonna put prep the uh socket right here for the AIO, which I got the Thermalrite one because literally, like the performance difference between like other brand like Thermalrite and like Corsair and whatever, the performance difference isn't enough. It's pretty much just aesthetics difference, which is this isn't as nice as having a whole like customizable screen. But I don't really need that. But you want to pull this bag out, and it's gonna have all the things you're gonna need. It's gonna have all the different like brackets for your motherboard. We're gonna find the right thing, and I'm gonna install it. And I'm gonna show you guys. All right, well, here's the case. So we're gonna go ahead and take off all these panels and stuff, and I'll show you guys the next step. Guys, don't peel it off yet, because you don't want to get fingerprints on it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it right here, right? Uh, lower it into the, into the thing. So now we're just gonna screw this in. I'm not gonna record this, because it's gonna take way too much space. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take 
the AIO out of the box and we're gonna try to install it in the top. We're gonna to put it in the top right here. So now we're gonna install the radiator like this. We're gonna install it to the top of this to go like this. So we gotta get the screws and I'm gonna screw it to the top, just two screws for now. All right, so we're gonna kind of wipe this off really just make sure nothing's on it. And we're gonna apply the thermal paste. So we're just gonna do a line straight across the top. So we're gonna switch camera real quick. He's gonna screw it on. So this bracket's kind of weird. So he's gonna have to screw it on a certain way. Yeah, we'll just cut to it when it's actually screwed on. This might take a while. Oh yeah? So now we're just gonna screw the rest of the screws on top and then we'll be done with the AIO and move on to the next part of the build. All right, so now we're gonna plug in all these cables in the back into the front over here. But we're gonna go ahead and take out the PSU and then saving the best for last, the GPU, so stay tuned for that. And then we've got the actual PSU right here in all its glory. We're gonna go ahead and install that and just put in all the cables, so we'll do that soon. So the next step of this is to put the power supply, which to plug in all the cables we need for this, plug it into this little compartment over here. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we're gonna plug all the cables down here into the stuff that's on the motherboard. So let's go ahead and start with the CPU cables, which is gonna be right here and here. So I have these cable extensions, which I'll be using, but I only have one of them for the CPU, so I'm gonna have to use one black cable. But you can barely see the black cable that you can see back there, but you can barely see it in the front, especially right here. It's just not really visible because the white cable kind of blocks it, which is amazing. But next we're gonna plug in the motherboard cable right there. And what I actually recommend doing is I can recommend plugging it in here first and then moving it through the grommet to the back to plug into the PSU cable. Well, it's plugged in now, but I just realized that um, the whole time we were recording, the mics were actually connected to the phone. So now we only have two cables left, that being the GPU cable right here, which we will install very soon. And the other thing is this SATA cable. And the SATA cable is for this fan hub right here. So we should just be able to plug the SATA cable into there. And then we'll go on to the GPU. All right, so there's one last part to install, and that is the graphics card. Let's go ahead and unbox it. I got the 3060. The reason I got it is because it was a, it was a pre-order off of Newegg, so it's $200 off. It is an all-white card, and ho, 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 look at that. All right, here we go. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, yeah, baby. This GPU still looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and peel this off real quick. We're going to need just two brackets. So we're going to take off these two brackets right here, and I'll see you guys when I'm done with that. So now we're just going to line it up right here. And we're gonna push with one hand and kind of hold the case to the other hand. All right, so now we're just gonna put these screws from the uh, brackets back in here to make sure they're nice and secure. All right, so now all that's left to do is just plug this cable into the GPU right here, this extension cable, and then uh, close up the PC and we're all done. So let's see if it works nice and snapped in. I'm probably gonna put this through the bottom one. Alright, so everything should be done, so we're gonna power it on and see if it works in 3, 2, 1. I know it's wrong, I didn't put the power supply on. on. Everything is correct, it should turn on and I have a mini monitor to check if it's working. It didn't turn on, but um, I think I'm actually one of the stupidest people in the world, I left this unplugged. On. Let's see if it works in 3, 2, 1. Oh my gosh, okay, the fan stopped. There's a light, so it's kind of working, but something is not working. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. All right, so it's day two of building the PC, and when you turn it on, there is a red light that switches from DRAM over to VGA after a couple seconds. You'll see it right there. Long story short, the red light didn't actually matter, and all I needed to do was plug in the monitor, so I could actually set up the PC, but it was working perfectly fine. Alright, so everything seems to be working. Alright guys, so it's been about an hour, and as you can see, the PC and it's just working perfectly fine, and I'll show you guys the test as soon as I get everything set up. Alright, so the PC is working, and Fortnite is set up, but before we test out the PC, let's go ahead and do a quick montage. <laughs> All 
Alright, so now let's test the PC and Battle Royale and Creative in both 1080p and 4K. Real quick, here's my FPS in the PC I used to use in 1080p, and here it is in 4K. Now let's see how it compares to my new PC. Alright, so we're in a mechanics training map, and as you can see, when I'm not moving in 1080p, I'm running about 6 to 700 FPS. When I start moving around and looking around, it goes to like high 300s or low 400s, but it's pretty good FPS. I would say it's around 500 average. And by the way, this is a 4K 27 inch monitor, so it can run 1080p, but this is just 27 inch monitor, just if you guys wanna know. All right, so now we're back into creative, but this time I'm at 4K, I'm running about 500 FPS, which is just like, I mean, it's pretty definitely better than the other PC, it's still very good. When I look around and move around, it's staying pretty consistent. And if you guys want to see my settings real quick, I'm using all of the uh, best settings for low quality. So we got full screen 1080p, I mean 4K performance mode, and we just have all of the uh, lowest settings on. So it should be pretty easy. Actually, it's supposed to be at 80%. So let's see if that makes a difference. So we're at 450 before. It's supposed to be 80%. It's supposed to be. So we actually did gain a whole lot of. Re Oh my gosh, so it's pretty much almost the same as 1080p, even though I changed the resolution, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I, so it's pretty much about the same in creative. So we're in Battle Royale 1080p, I'm running about 400 FPS and standing still, and when I start moving around, it goes down to about mid 200s to 300s, but it's still looking pretty good in 1080p. So now we're back to 4K, and let's see if it changed, and it looks pretty much about the same, I'm getting shot actually, and I don't have any weapons, I just move around. So it's staying about the same FPS, it's actually a little bit lower, it's, and it's a little bit more stuttery, but they're running about the same, maybe because I'm using a 4K monitor. All right, so I decided I'm gonna try to go for the win, and I also don't have uh, any audio, which kind of sucks, but uh, let's see if I can go for the win. I added some of my keybinds, so I should be able to play the game a little better now. Let's see if I can, oh, these are, the, uh, so I did get the same ones, awesome. So I can play the game a little bit, but, the sensitivity is still off, so like a little bit weird. That is not a shotgun. Whoopsie. Like it's dead. There is a shotgun. Awesome. You could shoot him behind me. Yeah, the, the sensitivity is definitely a little bit weird, but uh. Well, there it goes. Six people left, and I have some pretty good loot. Hopefully, I can win the game. All right, here's some more fighting. So let's go ahead and head over to the fighting. It still definitely feels very weird. I changed all my settings a little bit more to make them left my. I'm saying it's normally are, but it still feels great. Where are these kids? There they are. 63. Oh, the sensitive stuff is definitely way harder to aim than usual. Stay still. Oh, that guy's dead. What? Only two kids left. Hopefully I can win this. I'm just gonna record the rest of the game from now on. Alright, so here's the second to last kid over here, I guess. Oh, I yeah. just, <laughs> just headshot him instantly. All right, 1v1, the last kid's coming behind me. I see the last kid, he's right over here. Oh, he was right over here. I don't know what he's doing. This is Bawadis or something like that. Come back here, no. There he is, chat. We have to pick up for the win. There we go, let's go. First one on the new PC. So now I've got an amazing PC and nowhere to put it. But I'm moving to a new house soon, and when I do, I'm building my ultimate dream gaming setup and room from scratch. So if you want to be there for that journey, subscribe so you don't miss it. Jesus loves you, and I hope to see you again soon.